Good morning. Next week is our last week. Thanks to the parents, kids, and teachers who have joined us over the past three weeks. We've had requests to ask us to continue. We appreciate the support and the shout outs, but next Friday is our last session together. And what a celebration we've planned. There'll be lots of surprises, announcement of our contest winners. So bring a snack and a favorite drink and be ready to celebrate. We all can't wait. As we've been doing throughout our time together, we've created a definition chart and that chart continues to grow. So after Wednesday's lesson with Lorraine, I added shape poems. And after yesterday's with Lisa, I added ode to our chart. Um, and it's great to see all the things that we now know as the good things that poets do and the different devices and characteristics and elements that they have in their poetry. Uh, each day we've worked together, each session has generated a new poem. On Wednesday, Lorraine asked us for the first time when she introduced shape poems to us to either write a new poem about a topic that you like in the form of a shape that fits with the topic or she said, go back into a poem you've already written and turn that poem into a shape poem. When we return to the things we've written, poetry, any other type of writing, that is the act of revision. And so I've written that word on a piece um, chart here and I've added a hyphen. Vision means to see. And when you add the prefix re in front of it, it means to see again, to go back in and to change, you have the possibility to change what it is in front, what it is that you've already written. And today I'm going to, um, we're going to look at a particular type of revision. Uh, I had a second grader who years ago came up to me, we were writing stories at the time, and she said to me, Susan, I've finished and I'm so, ex I'm so happy I've written two pages and she excitedly gave me her story and I opened it. It was two pieces of paper stapled together and I opened it up and page one was, there was all this writing on it. And when I turned to page two, I saw she had written the words, the end in big bold letters. And she meant it, she was done. And I think all of us, second graders and older kids and adults feel that way often when we write. It's kind of like we've put a lot of hard work into it. Um, we've spent time on it, whether it's a short poem or a longer piece of writing, it feels done. We kind of tap ourselves on the back and always say, great job. But revision offers us the opportunity to make our writing shine, to see new things, to see it again. And today I'm going to show you a strategy for revising poetry and that's called line breaks. Line breaks are the place where the poet tells us they want us to take a pause when reading the poem, to slow down, to pay attention to the words in front, of the words on the page. And so, um, to begin to understand the importance and relevance of line breaks in the writing that we do, I have a poem that Lisa shared with you when she did the feelings lesson. And Carla Cuskin was very deliberate in the decision she made about her poem. She um, thought carefully about word choice. She used color, the word, the the color gray to kind of give us a sense of the loneliness and sadness that she was feeling. But she also deliberately placed, wrote her lines so that we could pause at the end and pay attention and look carefully at the words to, to increase the meaning, to give new relevance to the words that she's written and the feeling she was trying to convey. So at the end of each line, I am going to take a pause, whether there is punctuation or not. Punctuation also has us pause, 
but at the end of every line, I'm going to pause because that's what Carla Cuskin is instructing us to do with the way in which she's written her poem. It is gray out, it is gray in. In me, it is as gray as the day is gray. The trees look sad and I, not knowing why I do, cry. Wow, and as we said at the time um, that you looked at this poem, she really is giving us this, this feeling. She's setting the mood, and she's setting the mood with her words, but also by the deliberate use of ending her lines at various places. I have taken the words of Carla Cuskin's poem, and I've rewritten it um, so that we can really see how important it is to think about where we want each line to end. And I'm going to read that to you, again pausing at the end of every line. And now the lines are telling me to pause here, 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 after in, after it, as, all the way down, pausing at the end of each line. And then we'll compare the two. It is gray out, it is gray in, in, me, it is as, gray as, the day, is gray. The trees look sad and I, not knowing why I do cry. Wow. It's really confusing. The rhythm is interrupted. Um, I don't really understand what it is that she's even feeling. So I'm going to now use slash marks and the poem as Carla Cuskin originally wrote it to get back to where she wants the line breaks so we can again understand and make meaning of the words that she wrote. So her first line break is after out. And then it's after in. And then it goes again here. It is as gray as the day is gray, a longer line. The trees look sad. And I not knowing why I do, again, a longer line, cry. So the meaning is clear. And it is the use of line breaks that helps establish and makes us feel what it is that she wants the reader to feel. So both versions are using the same words, but tone, rhythm, the flow of the words, the meaning, um, and the feelings evoked are very different when deliberate choices are made about line breaks. I went back into my folder, and actually before I even did that, I had been haunted, haunting feeling about the word hero. There was some word in my envelope that had been kind of tugging at me. And so I went back in and I found the word hero and I started to compile a list last week of the people who are heroes in my life. Um, they're the healthcare workers, nurses and doctors, parents or caregivers, the principals. I heard there are principals in trucks, driving around in trucks in New York City, delivering food, and distributing food to children. There are bus drivers and uh, mail, the mail person, the trash collector, all really important jobs, firemen, policemen, store salespeople. So I thought I want to write a poem about heroes. And I'm going to show you what I've written so far and read it to you and think, is this conveying the meaning, these words conveying the meaning I want um, is the rhythm correct? Um, how does it flow? Save one life, you're a hero. Oh, sorry, actually, not good job of reading it. I've even written so that I want the line breaks to end right here, right now. So, save one, save one life, you're a hero, save a hundred and you're a nurse. Confusing, isn't it? It's not what I really want to say. 
And so I'm going to go back in and I'm going to use slash marks to denote where I want the lines to end. So let me think. Um, I think hero, important words that jump out at me are hero, life, hero, and nurse. So I think I'm going to put my first line break here. And then I think I want life on a line all by itself. And then your a, uh, and then a line here. And then save 100 and your a, uh, and that will mean that I'll end with nurse. And it's important, I think, for me in this poem and as I continue to write, just to, to end with strong words. Because when you end with a strong word, you linger even longer. You take a longer pause. It's time for the reader to just take a moment to reflect. And so to recopy this poem with the line breaks as I truly want them, you'll see that the poem conveys the meaning that I want the reader to have and the feelings I want the reader to leave with at the end of the poem. Remember, this is just the beginning. Save one life, you're a hero. Save a hundred, you're a nurse. So, as we end this session, where I'm asking you to go back into your poetry folder, it's overflowing with poems. You've generated so many since we've been together. And I want you to pick one where you see that you can apply the strategy of using line breaks. And then you're going to use slash marks to denote where you want the lines to end, and then recopy your poem. I read my poem aloud a lot last night to my husband, and I even read it into the air, just into the room. It's a big difference to read it to yourself to make the decision about where you want the line breaks and to hear the words being said. It really gives you a sense of whether or not the poem makes sense. So have fun revising your poems and have a great weekend. Be safe, all for poetry and poetry for all. See you on Monday, bye.